Welcome to CRT Gaming Podcast, episode 29, Aladdin. This is Jones, and with me this evening are my dear good friends, Gohan and Daspic. Uh, Mr. Daspic, how are you doing this evening? <laughs> Pretty great, man. Are you doing good? I am. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Sing song kind of kind of mood. <laughs> how do you feel about being a street rat? Are you cool with that? I'm okay with it. You know, I'm a little, <laughs> little thievery, never, never killed anybody. Not right away. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? And uh, Mr. Gohan. You uh, you've been been uh, diving into this madness of uh, Disney songs this week. It, uh, it was a uh, trip down memory lane, no doubt about it. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're doing uh, basically games that've been based off a movie, and uh, I went with Aladdin. Uh, I don't know if you guys have played it before. Have you either? Have you, have you played it before, Daspec? I have. Uh, never finished it. Uh, that hasn't changed. Uh, but I have played it before and just never got very far. I got farther. Oh, I got, I got, yeah, I got okay this time, but uh, then I accidentally uh, <laughs> looked away and swiped the wrong way on the continue screen and ended my game, which uh, kind of pissed me off because <laughs> I was kind of in it. I was like, damn it, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Gohan, have you uh, played this before? Yes and no. Uh, <laughs> That's I, so I work, I so here. I worked huh? at a KB Toys when this game came out uh, in the early '90s, and at the front of the store we had this cool display with the Genesis with like an AV setup. And uh, one of the rules of the job was, in all capital letters, "Do not play the demo video games, or you will be fired." Sounds like the arcade so, I worked at. <laughs> kind of. Uh, so to pass the time, I would watch kids play games, you know, on the on the dis- on the display. And one of the games that we had was um, Aladdin. So uh, if if the kids playing the game were cool, I'd give them like you know, give them tips. But uh, if the kids were uh, shitty. Uh, I would uh, I would kind of <laughs> give them. We'll just say. Uh, like very harsh feedback on their play style because uh, <laughs> p- parents used to use the KB Toy Store almost like as a free fire babysitting service while they like walked around the mall. So I, I never played Aladdin, but I watched it quite a bit. Nice, yeah. I, I played this back in '93 when it came out, and I remember beating it with a uh, friend of mine that uh, I was calling Dalsum. You guys might know who I'm talking about, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we played through this. He was a big <laughs> Disney nut. And uh, it, it surprised me. It was something I didn't, wasn't expecting uh, back then. And I had a good time with it as a platform game. It does a lot of things like really well. I actually bought the, uh, there's like an Aladdin and Lion King little combo that's out for like the Switch and PlayStation and Xbox and all that you can get. I actually purchased it because it comes with like a bunch of like extra bonus content which it has uh like the making of aladdin so you get to see like you know like stuff back that was recorded like back in 93 94 uh, as far as how they were doing things and uh which was really cool i learned a lot of stuff and it also came with a couple different versions of aladdin like you, you had like the uh the movie or the game version, uh, the game Oh, okay. so, you got, so you got like the uh, Genesis release, the Japanese release, uh, I think like a Game Boy version of it. But what was really cool is that they have this uh, version called the Final Cut version. And the regular version kind of has kind of like a little bit of a jerky camera you know, yes. as you're moving around the screen. Uh, that, that was smoothed out, so it doesn't do that. And there's a couple cool. little differences, but I didn't play like... I, I played that version of it. I didn't play the standard regular version of it, so I couldn't really remember what the real differences were. The one thing that was really cool is the uh, there was the Tokyo show uh, back in 93, uh, and this game demo released there, and they actually put that demo in with this, so you got to play something from back then, and you got to see kind of how the game was like originally conceived. 
and that demo is harder than this entire game. <laughs> <laughs> demo is that, that is awesome. Card. So, so they basically let you, Jones, if I'm understanding right, like they essentially gave you like the TGS floor demo of yeah. the game. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, that yeah. was pretty cool. And they did a lot of things like uh, uh, just kind of talking about the, the process they went through making this game as far as the uh, like extra content goes, where uh, you kind of learned like like this game was done in 99 days. Which that seems like really short that, to me. That's wow, fast <laughs> for the process. Yeah, because like what they had is Disney had granted the rights to Aladdin to another company. Virgin Games had just done the Jungle Book. Mm -hmm. So the, the Disney was kind of confident and in, in letting them go with Aladdin, but they're kind of like, here's the deal: Aladdin's coming out on VHS, and inside this VHS, you know, box is going to be a uh, an ad for the you know the genesis game it's got to be done before aladdin ships jesus so but i mean if you kind of think about that as far as the pressure that would be is i mean because you have you know they're, they're printing 10 million copies you know of aladdin and you know your game's getting ready to be advertised in 10 million copies of you know a pretty pressure's on yeah you know well i mean it's 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 a you know a children's movie so to speak you know and kids play games so it you know the game did really well it sold over four, four million copies which is kind of huge for back then that's incredible that's like i don't know what the figures are but that's probably in the top 10 of all um, top 10 of all genesis games probably sold like it's that high up in the the rankings the the pool of people back then playing games was so much smaller than it is today. Yeah, it had a, what was really cool is I learned uh, that working at Virgin Games at this time was Dave Perry. Yeah. And this is where a after they completed Aladdin, they were then offered the Lion King franchise and like Dave Perry's team left and they went and formed Shiny. And Arthur Jim was born. Yeah, but you can, <laughs> you can clearly now you know, knowing it's the same people, kind of yeah. see Earthworm Jam, and then you can see the animation from this. I totally get it. But even though there's different teams on it, because I didn't know this, I did not know. I thought the actual artwork in Aladdin was inspired by you know Disney's Aladdin, but it's actually the animators that worked on Aladdin did Holy all the shit. animation of these characters. That explains a lot. Damn, that's nuts. Yeah, that was yeah. pretty crazy. I mean, that's pretty historic, right? I mean, like you're saying, it's a, that it was that close to the real thing. This was the first time there was a true G Disney game to me. Up until then, there were great games, of course, that featured Disney characters, no doubt about it. Like, I loved DuckTales on the NES, and I loved the uh, uh, Castle Evolution game on Genesis. Yeah, that was cool. Castle Evolution was awesome. But, but Aladdin to me was just a hit that really did justice to the to the source material and you can absolutely see this you know and at the time you know this game kind of changed the course of disney and what they did in gaming for years to come after this the authenticity like everything about their film was captured you know from characters to the setting to the you're saying the film quality sprite animation and even the music and i mean Back then, in the early 90s, music was just a huge part of what made people love those early 90s feature films. You know, whether it's Little Mermaid or Beauty and the Beast, like the music was a big, big part of it. And it was all faithfully there, you know, given, you know, what the, what the hardware. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you could hum right along. Like I said, if you've seen the movie and, you know, a lot of the songs are kind of made so they burn into your brain. Um, <laughs> if you have a little sister, they definitely burn in your brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you know you've seen it more than once, or you've heard it more than once. That's for definitely sure. Yeah, one of the things I thought was uh, kind of interesting is in these kind of like behind the scenes making of videos, they had talked about the Lion King, but I think that's kind of they did the same thing for Aladdin, and it's kind of like if you think about it, it was like you know a, a Disney mandate and the game has to be hard and the reason they want the game to be hard is to discourage you from going to the store and renting this and beating it so you would actually you know kind of have to own this game to play it enough to beat it mission accomplished 
<laughs> yeah, it's got a little, it's a little tricky <laughs> at times. I'm not going to say it's not, but it, it had a lot of uh, like great things in it. Like uh, something that we've talked about in the past is I always enjoy uh, like little touches, like in animations that they put in games, like uh, the standing still, you know, animation or uh, j just everything was super, you know, spot on for the source material wise, but like the uh, kind of things that would happen, like you throw an apple at a guy, he's got a sword, he cuts the apple in half. Um, you know, you throw, you know, a knife, you block it, you know, with your sword when you hit it and it bounces away. Just all the little extra animations that were in the game. Uh, I hit them was... and their pants fall off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to jumping on the camels, you know, as the little jump pads, you know, and yeah, whether it was those little details to like the side characters, like, you know, the monkey and the you know, shape shifting genie played by Robin Williams, the, the entire game is just dripping in personality. Yeah, yeah that little pop up shop that happens. And, uh... And like in the enemies, when they die, they turn into like a little puff of like genie smoke, as opposed to just blinking out of existence. Ha! My only, my only complaint with the game is the same complaint that I have for Earthworm Jim, is the hit detection. It, it, when you get hit, it just you kind of just blink, and there's like no impact to you. Like you're you don't. It seems like you don't react. You just kind of start blinking. And so if you walk too close to somebody, suddenly, you know, you're hit and you start blinking. That, that's an Earthworm Jim does the exact same thing. And it drives me bananas because when there's enemies just crawling all over the place, and Earthworm Jim does it. Uh, it was always hard to tell, like, when you were too close or whatever. That was the only thing that bothered me. But other than that, no, it was a beautiful freaking game. You're, you're talking about Daz, like, wanting, like, knockback animations. Yeah, like, like I normally... Hit, if you get hit, there's some kind of a reaction or not. Some kind of reaction, something. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like nothing happened other than you went to vulnerable for half a second, you know? Um, so it's just, it, it's not always clear that you were hit. That's all. But it was just so funny when you said that it was, you know, Dave Perry was involved. I was like, holy crap, no wonder... <laughs> no wonder it's so much like Earthworm Jim. Or Earthworm Jim is so much like it. Um, that's cool. Yeah, you can definitely yeah, see the difference in uh, just like the levels kind of like of talent, so to speak. Like, because they did Jungle Book before in Cool Spot. And so you can kind of see what they did kind of on their own. And then like Aladdin represents what they were able to do with, uh, you know, like the Disney animators. And I mean, because... You know, like this is back when Disney, when the Mega Mouse was being built, you know, like Disney was already yeah. something, but this, you know, like Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, all that built like this bedrock that this giant mouse just clawed his way to the <laughs> top of the mountain and swallowed the world. Yeah, their animation was unmatched at that point. Yeah, like in, in that, the little documentaries I was watching, the like lead animator he was telling a story about he had an office you know at, there and they also had one at disney because he was kind of like the liaison to go back and forth between the, the two companies so what they're working on to make it work for the game and he was talking about how insane it was that he was the lead animator you know trying to teach disney people to animate because they had to do it with a different frame rate for the game for it to work mm -hmm. oh. but uh, you know and he was talking about how you know like the you know even though he was in the game industry building this game, like where those people were, that was his dream job. He was like, this is a dream to be able to, you know, work here at Disney. And it's... it's I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, can you just imagine? I mean, like everyone who is a creative grows up and that is, you know, this kind of this goal, right? To work for Disney or, you know, Lucasfilm or something like that. And to be a you know, game animator and getting to work with these just like pillars and heroes of yours. I mean, it, it had to have just been like, you know, surreal. And, you know, a lot of this, right, it's like you're saying, the, a lot of this is like timing, right? It's like this perfect storm. That's it. You know, the, the Virgin team, they work on stuff like Cool Spot, and it's kind of hard to think about like a platforming game based on a soda pop you know in today's video game <laughs> world but like the the, the the cool spot games showed a lot of really at the time kind of sophisticated character animation yeah. and um 
to be coupled with a with a team that actually understood how to make that kind of quality of sprite you know animation mixed with the geniuses from the feature film you know aladdin team combining together i mean like yeah i mean i think that's just one of the things about it that just made it such a landmark was like it was just so close to the real mccoy you know the game itself is like a really awesome simple action platformer uh the sword fighting was solid and so was, you know kind of uh, chucking the apples at the bad guys and yeah like aladdin's jump physics you know while they weren't like nintendo quality platforming like they're pretty damn good you know like uh, the game was very polished yeah, I like the uh, yeah the the bonus level at the end where you play Abu, you know, and you run around and mm-hmm. try to get free guys and stuff like that. But he's got like a really good jump, and uh, you can swing the sword around with him. I, I wouldn't mind a level or two of just me monkeying around, going around <laughs> with some Abu <laughs> doing some stuff. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> yeah, that was that, that was that was that like left a mark. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the, um, the the bonus matches and I don't know what you would kind of call it, like the the, the slot machine, you know, yes. where you're, you know, like those little things, they just break up the action and let you see some of the other characters and just kind of enjoy the art, you know? <laughs> Nowadays, yeah. you got to pay for that kind of action with the slot machines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's uh, like, you know, rehabilitation, you know, facilities <laughs> for that. <laughs> Exactly. Now they'd have to put a warning on it. This is, you know, gambling. Gambling is in the game. Yeah, I know the game. Like the levels, like went, it like escalates really quickly. Like as far as, um, you know, if you compare it to the movie, so to speak, like uh, you, you spend most of the game, uh, you know, going through like uh, what's that, like Agrabah, like and yeah. and, mm-hmm. and then you finally make it to the actual. Uh, like lamp like the cave of wonders and once you pass the lamp it's like you're like two levels away from beating the game you know as opposed to like in, in you know in the movie like the lamp kind of starts off pretty quick and uh yeah so i was playing it and i was in jafar's palace and then there was jafar and it was over i was kind of <laughs> i wasn't ready for it to be over I mean, so quick after i like mean that. they they had nine they had 90 days jokes oh i know oh, i know <laughs> I just meant as I was playing back through it, it surprised you, you, me. Yeah, you know, I think in this is a ninety game, you know, ninety day. Yeah, game. In, in in today's game world, like there'd be an hour and you'd fight Jafar. It's like <laughs> send more money for DLC. <laughs> they have DLC. It's in the game. But it did have. Did it, any of you guys make it to the? Uh, I think the level was called Escape, where you ride I, on carpet. I made it uh, to the to Cable of Wonders. The, okay, it's getting, uh, escaping the Cable Wonders is the. Uh, I remember doing that before. I didn't get there this week, uh, but I do remember doing that before, and that was rough. Yeah, that, that left a mark. <laughs> yeah, because I still remember it years, years, years. That past. level's evil. It's got a uh, uh, you're on a your magic carpet and you're flying. There's a it's actually like kind of gorgeous because there's like purples and reds, and so like everything's really visually popping. Um. But regardless, it, like it's got like like blast processing happening that's like light years ahead of Sonic's time, because like the, <laughs> the screen is it, it is moving, you know. So the characters are animated like heavy wind, but like things are coming across the screen like really fast. And there's like a genie hand that's pointing up or down because you're trying to guide your carpet to dodge these obstacles. So like you see like a blink blink up, so you go up and you miss it, and it's like you know down and then it does this for a while then all of a sudden it's like a question mark and you're like going like Mach 5 it's like what do you mean I get a question oh shit <laughs> yeah, yeah you've been training me with these fingers for like you know a minute now <laughs> and then it gave you the finger <laughs> yeah I was like I don't know <laughs> and smack run right into it <laughs> see this sounds like a this sounds like a Battletoads level <laughs> difficulty <laughs> like this is riding on those jet skis or something <laughs> You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. Battletoads. Yeah. But I did. I persevered. I got through. 
I got like a, my little five second ending where I go on a carpet ride and I embrace the princess Jasmine in my arms. <laughs> I make her mine. <laughs> This is the director's cut of Aladdin. <laughs> I don't know. He kisses her. There. I guess he, you know, I don't know if he had permission though. So, you know, maybe it's, we need to cancel this. Um, but it was a good game. It was fun to go back and play it. Um, over, I'm glad it's held up over the years. It, it's still a pretty, pretty fun game. Yeah, it totally holds up. I mean, and like the levels themselves, like the there's just a nice blend of like kind of the main line through the level, and there's enough stuff to like discover off the beaten path, and you know, it's a simple action platformer. But Aladdin also got to do a lot of other fun things in the environment, right? Like he does like the hand over hand climbing, and then there's like, magic ropes and like the little diving board poles that you bounce off of, and the zip lines. Um, they, they definitely they keep the variety coming. It's not just getting guys with the sword and the apple. Like you're kind of you're you're having to kind of flex a lot of uh, Twitch, uh, uh, you know, Twitch gameplay. You know, the, the more that, that the you know, the game kind of progresses. Yeah, because you did have like horizontal levels, you know, as well as vertical, and then there was one level where it scrolled left, which is. You know, I know some games you can go left, but generally you go right, you know, so it's kind of weird playing a platformer going left. But this isn't really uh, Aladdin related, but uh, it was something that in those uh, making of Aladdins they said I thought was kind of interesting. Just to kind of like state the power of Disney is they were talking about when they were going to get the rights to do The Lion King, um, you know, ended up going to another company to do it. But the lion king was done by disney's b team you know so they have like an a team and a b team and the uh, less and b is like lesser so if you're on a team you're like disney's you know elite super gurus yeah and they they apparently were working on pocahontas so you know like the worst people working at disney made lion king so i think that's kind of <laughs> if that's the worst you got they you know, you got some talent working I for you. I uh, think the B team won out there because I think Lion King's a bit better than Pocahontas. I think as far as a movie, I'd have to really judge the, you know, the quality of the. I, I've seen Pocahontas. I a think long over time, time one that's held up more than the other. I think would be Lion Lion King. Everybody, their mother's seen Lion King. Oh yeah. Yeah, Lion King definitely. I, I worked at East Suncoast when that movie came out, and I think that was one of our most reserved movies when that came out. I remember just boxes and boxes and boxes of VHS tapes. It wasn't Tetsuo the Iron Man? Um, that was <laughs> that was just my you. Most, that was my <laughs> most wanted. <laughs> when are we getting this on Laserdisc? That's what I was asking. <laughs> So, like, th this is one of the things that I've noticed, though. Like, there is, you know, out in the world, this big kind of, like, disdain for uh, the Super NES version of this game. And I never, ever got to play the Super NES version. I didn't get to play the Genesis game, and I didn't get to play the Super NES version. But after doing a little digging, like... The Super NES version was made by Capcom. Capcom is, for the most part, pretty good quality games, especially back then. And after doing a little digging, uh, Shinji Mikami designed the Super NES version of Aladdin. And this is the guy who went on to make Resident Evil. So uh, Super NES Aladdin was made by uh, the creator of Resident Evil. So. So he needs to stick to zombies, there. is what we've learned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I played the Super NES version for a minute. You know, this week the, the assignment was Genesis. But the Super NES version, I put it in, I was like, wow, this, you know, while, you know, definitely, you know, competent, good game, it just doesn't hold a candle to the Genesis version. It, it's a pretty uh, unfair comparison in some ways. Yeah, it must have been, you know, something with just porting it over. Um, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. A lot of super, you know, a lot of games on both systems, generally the better playing one is on the Genesis for whatever reason. I don't know what yeah. it is exactly. 
it would look better on Super NES, but it played better on the Genesis. That was the, the de facto standard. So you had to, you know, pick your battles. Like, what did you want? Did you want it to play really good? Or did you want it to look that sexy? And, you know, I opted for play. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that... Yeah, maybe this was just, like, kind of too ahead of the time or whatever, but this, to me, seemed like it would have made a brilliant um, Sega CD game. Because, man, it would have just been so awesome with... You know, like video cutscenes, and of course, you know the soundtrack music from the film. Like Aladdin seems like that would have made a nice, you know, a port. For, Honestly, uh, if Sega I CD. had to, if I had to guess, uh, Disney probably would not have let Sega put that on Sega CD because of how shitty the cutscenes would look. <laughs> it would be a poor representation of their movie, and they probably were like, oh, hell no. You're not doing that to our yeah. movie. No, no, no. It's either this or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they had a uh, a thing. Like, like Disney like gave them like, their full resources when they did this. Like, you know, here's our animators. Use them. Here's the music. Here's, you know, here's the score. You know, here's the music books. Here you go. And uh, one crazy. of the things... Yeah, that is crazy. And they were talking about how hard it was because, you know, these songs are done with these giant orchestras, you know, as far as the music goes. So they're trying, you know, they're, you have a, a piece of music written. It's got like 72 instruments playing in it. And, you can, you know, and you got to cut it down to still sound like the song, but, you know, work on the hardware that can do like six channels of audio. Jesus. Um, so they did a, a pretty good job, you know, when you think about it, you know, in that respect. Every but, song's recognizable. <laughs> <laughs> they were talking about, you know, like the crunch. They had to, you know, this had to be done by this date. So they did levels and then they were progressing the story. It's just kind of done like in a text panel, you know, in between levels. And, how, you know, they were like real proud that they were able to, you know, kind of like weave a story into this. They're, and they were talking about when they were testing it. They were watching the kids and, you know, they figured the kids seen the movie, the kids playing the game. Let's see how they do it. And they were just watching the kids as they mashed the button just to immediately get through it, you know, to not even read it, <laughs> to, to play the game. <laughs> so they're talking about, yeah, story don't matter. <laughs> oh, just, I could only imagine all the just like completely crestfallen developers. It's like, yeah, like the last, you know four months of your life making Jafar say some you know, line of text. Yeah, like, been this five-year-old like, this five-year-old yeah. does this five-year-old does not give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get past his shit. Yeah. <laughs> but that, I mean, that, that being said though, the little cinematics between the levels did do a good enough job to move the story along. Yeah, know? identify the villain. It, 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 yeah, it totally, you know, like all the big, you know, high notes of the movie, they had a little, you know, kind of breadcrumb, you know, through it, which compared to a, a lot of video games back then, it's like, this is in no way a reflection of the movie at all. And they did, uh, they did good service there. So. Yeah, and like I said, the nods are, if, if you played this game, you, you know, if, if you were alive at that time, you either purposely or inadvertently, you've somehow seen this movie. Yeah, but... Aladdin maybe sat my kids a couple times. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of crazy to think this movie is you know, 30 some years old or getting close to 30 years old now. And uh, it still still holds up as as a feature. And uh, like you're saying, Jones, really surprised at how well the game you know, itself held up. Too. Yeah, that and for the movie actually being so old, if, if you're listening to this and you haven't played this game, I say give it a shot. And if you've never seen the movie, it's on the Disney service, you know, in 4K. Uh, do yourself a favor and watch it, too. Uh, it's just, it's wholesome fun. But we're doing we're movies, sure. right? So you, got, you guys. CRT are, goes to Hollywood. We all have our spray tans and glasses on. Like, where, where are we going next? That's what we're going to find out. Uh, I think, I think Daz Pick uh, has the choice. Our fate lies in Daz's pick. Oh, Saints Preserve Us. Oh, Saints Preserve Us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Looking through the laundry list of, of movie-to-game titles, I did find one. <laughs> that one might say, uh, struck my fancy. It's Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. <laughs> 
this yet on the like, Sega Genesis. You can't see me right now, Daz, but I'm like standing up and clapping. Like we gotta save those kids. <laughs> like for Michael. Orson Welles at the end of Citizen Kane, you know, just Gotta, gotta kick those sweet dance moves at Space Michael. Kick those, kick those kids in the face. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get copyrighted for the freaking music. Uh, it's at least not James Pond. I thought you might be gone without. Nope, that wasn't a movie. <laughs> Thank God. Just really impressed right now, Baz. Stick around next week when we check out uh, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> this is so this is Jones with Daz Pick and Gohan and uh <laughs> we're signing out. Yahoo! <laughs> <laughs>